let's have a look at the Office 365 CLI. At its command line interface that allows Office 365 tenant administrators, IT pros, uh, or DevOps folks to uh, manage their tenants or execute automated scripts. And it can run on any platform, no matter where, whether you're using macOS or Windows or whether you prefer PowerShell or Bash. The CLI just runs. I will follow the installation guide here and install it on my machine. So as a prerequisite, uh, Node GS will have to be installed. So Node V. I already have Node GS installed on my machine. So the next thing to do is I'll go and install the Office 365 CLI by running npm install. That's uh, install globally. And that's the command for the CLI. So after I run that, hopefully that will be installed. And then we can play with the CLI to see how it works. Now, the starting point is to type O365 and I will enter in interactive mode, which is slightly faster uh, mode. And I'll type anything here to see what is next. So what we can see here is uh, different namespaces. So there are commands related to Azure AD, commands related to Azure management for managing flows mainly, commands related to the graph, commands related to upgrading SharePoint framework packages, and many commands related to SharePoint. I'll just quickly type SPO and when we follow that, if we type the namespace, we'll get a huge list of what we can do further. And in my case is, I'll try to get details for a web. So if we type SPO web, we'll get further details what we can do with the web. And as you can see, we can create a new site if we say SPO web add, or get details about the site if we say SPO web get. And the whole CLI follows the same pattern of site, and then you have add, get, list, remove, set. So it's very easy to navigate through all the commands because mostly they follow those uh, those patterns there. Um, but I need further information about the SPO web get because I still don't know how to use it, and I can type help. I can use the command with the following options and probably I'll have to specify a web URL. And down below we have an examples. Probably I can just copy paste that. But also we have a remarks. And in the remarks it said, make sure that you're logged in first before you can execute that command. So let's go and log into my site. SPO login. Then there is my site over here. Just copy the URL and paste it here. Okay, now I'll have to use my browser to navigate through that URL there and paste the code that is also being specified here. Provide my credentials. And now I have to accept the app permissions. Um, and this is the uh, PMP Office 365 management shell. Uh, as a tenant admin, I have to accept that. Your own application can be specified here. It's not necessarily needed to use that one, but for now I'll use that one because it's way, way easier for me to set up. And with that, I should be done. I'll close the window and I'm logged in now. Let's try to get information about my site now. SPO web get web URL and again there is the site. Before that I'll try to go into uh, a bigger screen because we might get a little bit more details. Let's see. Enter. And I've got my details for my site. So as you can see, we can get information the same way as we would do in, in PowerShell. 
but there is another nice feature here just to show you um, let's try to break it this is a non-existing uh, URL and if I try to access it it will g give me a 404 but uh, it, I did it by purpose but there might be times where I don't know what is happening and why the CLI is throwing error so to find out what is happening usually we can use debug so this is specific option that if I run it with with that command I'll get a nice log with everything what happened on the network and we can see that it executed the web requests it did something to get access token before that and uh, it returned some uh, some additional response with some details and we can easily debug a command in case it throws an error and we don't know what is happening another nice feature of uh, the CLI is that we can have a different output the first output was in a format of a table but in case we want to automation and we need to work with objects we can specify output of JSON and when we run that command the returned uh, the, the result of will be in a, in a JSON format and we can further use it in, in automation scripts let's try to change the title of uh, the web but uh, using a, a different mode so I'll exit from the interactive mode and I will just type O365 SPO web set help and as you can see we can use it even directly from the command line this is very useful when we have to build scripts in the bash or powershell now I'll try to change the title of my uh, web so I'll just copy the command I'll try to say O365 paste the command but I need to I'll say that that's team B because my site is already called team A and I will place my URL here copy paste there you go let's have a look if something has changed fresh team B let's see how this can be used in an automation uh, like I have uh, Azure DevOps here and I have a release pipeline and in my release pipeline um, I have two steps the first one is to install node.js and the second one, I one is to run a bash script and here is my bash script and as you can see it's, it, it will run uh, Office 365 CLI uh, and let's see how this might look so I have few parameters on top that I'll pass through the Azure DevOps then I'm installing the CLI on that uh, release machine the release agent and finally I will log in using the CLI using some credentials here we can use a different authentication type which could be password uh, an email or it could be also certificate and finally I will add app to an app catalog so I'll deploy my SharePoint framework solution a package to an app catalog and then I will deploy it as you can see we can use the CLI in an automated pipelines for CI CD or has it running automated scripts on, on an administrator machine on a daily basis and with that we reached the end of uh, my demo so thanks for watching mm -hmm.